about how I polish my plexiglass and turn it from, I guess you could say this into this. Now this is just a quick polish, obviously. It's uh, not the best job, but we're just trying to get this chamfer on the outside profile polished up. So what I'm doing is I'm taking 150, 320, 1000 and some heat and uh, taking the sandpaper in progression. Now obviously there could be some, some finer progression. I would probably like to go like uh, 150, 220, 320, 800 flame. Uh, but we're working with what we got here and this will do a plenty fine job at it. So we're gonna go around and sand these edges up with the 150, then we're gonna touch it with the 320. You will see me going back and forth between the 320 and the 1000 and mostly because I'm gonna find some scratches as I'm going through that the 1000 is not gonna take up and it's just a lot quicker to run back with the 320 and do that little spot you need and touch back over it with the 1000 than it is to try to get any of those scratches out with 1000 grit. Now you can use a block if you want. This is just a little simple thing that we're sanding. So I'm gonna go around on this chamfer and I'm gonna do the sides too, just with the 150. I'm not gonna go around uh, polishing the sides through the whole thing just because they're not going to be seen and it's not needed. So you want to make sure you kind of go for a consistent, it'll start hazing up the plexiglass, like turning it that, that white color. Uh, you want to get consistent shade across the whole thing so you can tell you sanded it all. Deep scratches and stuff will show up as just darker marks. It'll look like a dark line through your sanding. You can kind of see in here, I went over that a couple passes. Oh, where's the, went over this a couple passes already, and this is a more consistent white shade, whereas this is darker. That means this has a deeper groove on it that I gotta take off, and that's besides the chamfer itself. All right, so now that we went over the whole thing with the 150, we're gonna go over the whole thing again with the 320, again, I'm not going on the sides, I'm just getting this top chamfer here. Now, basically what I'm looking for in this one is this is actually gonna darken it up because this is actually gonna start to polish it and turn it back to clear. So you should see your edge kind of consistently darkening it up. Your scratches will kind of represent themselves as light marks in your piece. And then your final sanding step, once you get through the 320, you're gonna hit it with the 1000. And with this, you're definitely gonna see some uh, darkening. It's gonna make it even darker, the edge. And this is where you're gonna start seeing your polish. Now again, you will see me jump back and forth between this and the 320, because even like, I don't know how well you can see it in the camera. Let's see. These little scratch marks in here, it's gonna take you forever to try to get that out with 1000. So you're much better off just hitting that back with the 320. You know, try not to go too far beyond the scratches that you have to do so you're not reworking it all that much. And then you should see them scratches kind of disappear, your sanded area darken back up. You'll see where it's starting to become clear, clear again and darken back up comparison to the two sides. And go around and do the whole thing like this. And again, I'm just getting this chamfer edge around the sides. I'm not really too concerned with the side. That's gonna be inside the rabbit that I cut out to hold the plexiglass and you're not gonna see that in the end.
right, so we got it 1,000 sanded and we're much closer to where we want to be. I'm just going to take some rubbing alcohol, just regular cheap old rubbing alcohol and a rag. Wipe these corners. That'll kind of free away or take away the dust and any uh, dirt that's on the edge that I'm going to try to polish because that flame will basically just melt it into the surface if you don't take care of it now. All right, so you can kind of see we're getting much closer, but still a bit of a dull finish, even on this edge here. And the flame should take care of that for us. All right, and you wanna kinda of keep a steady speed with a consistent distance. And you're just trying to fan over it. You're trying to heat up the edge and it'll kind of take away those scratches. I'm not really sure what it's doing on a molecular level or a scientific level, but heat take away scratch, that's all I care about. If you, uh, if you get too crazy and you overheat it, it will kind of bubble and you'll see some little air bubbles come start rising through your piece. Uh, once you get those, they're very hard to get back out if you start getting some deep air bubbles. At that point, you might as well uh, air bubble the whole damn thing and pretend that it's a look that you were trying to go for on purpose. So again, like I said, I'm just going over it multiple passes over and over again, keeping the flame uh, about two inches or so away. Now this is, uh, I normally use propane. This is acetylene. I believe, and uh, this actually gets a lot hotter than the propane torch, so you gotta be a lot more careful. The propane torch, or like just a normal butane uh, handheld torch, you can really kind of go pretty slow with it. It's definitely a learning curve, jumping back from propane to this. How you can, well you can see it in the camera there's two little minor scratches and it looks like you're not gonna be able to see it but you can definitely tell it is doing a much nicer job polishing that up so i'm gonna go around a couple more times and you kind of want to change your angle of view kind of use the light in your shop that's reflecting refracting off of the edge and you can kind of see scratches that you're not going to be able to see from a straight up point of view. Now sometimes you will overheat it and it'll kind of rehaze your corner. I don't know how well you can got to get a better camera, but it's, you can see that kind of rehaze that corner. So I'm going to leave that alone for a couple seconds, uh, go around, touch up some of these other areas I have, and I'll come back to that once the heat reduces a little bit and you can touch it with the torch again and it'll fix that haze you got there. kind of took that out of there you definitely there are a lot of areas of no return with this when you're going flame polishing so be very careful a lot of people just like to do uh, polishing com sandpaper you know in different grits and then polishing compound but I like to use a little bit of both